Khalid ibn al-Walid, this battle machine, a warrior chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be taught from the early ages of five or six by his father, a known warrior of Quraysh for many years, how to use an arrow, how to use a spear and how to use the sword. The sword? Yes, the sword. But there was something in the heart of Khalid and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I've come to you with many sins. I have fought against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have fought against the messenger of Allah. I have fought against the believers. I caused believers to lose a battle. I caused death. I caused destruction. I caused defeat. Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he may forgive me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Khalid, a man who enters Islam, all his past sins are forgiven. Ya Khalid, a man when he enters Islam, all of his past sins are forgiven. He said, Ya Rasulullah, and he insisted because it was in his heart. How, he, how could this man Khalid, who is now in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, submitting to the will of Allah, knowing in his heart that he was the reason for their defeat in the battle of Uhud. He was the reason for their defeat in the battle of Uhud, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was bled. He bled in this battle where the companions thought that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has died. How could Khalid allow this to pass? And he said, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive me. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Allah, forgive Khalid for whatever he has done and allow him to be a front and a fighter, a warrior to fight for the cause of Islam and not for the cause of evil. Now Khalid has entered Islam. Khalid has entered Islam. And after a few months of entering Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew having Khalid on their side, a man who has never lost a battle, never lost a battle in his life. He prepared an army and he said that this army is being prepared for a mighty mission. And this mission was to allow the Muslim state, the Islamic nation to be pushed forward, to take out Arabia, to push the borders of Syria and Sham, to push the borders of Persia, of Rome, to push the borders of Iraq. This army was being prepared. Its leader was not Khalid as of yet was not Khalid as of yet. But before an army to be prepared and sent, prepared and sent, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is a man of mercy. So he sent a group of men with a letter to the ruler. And he said, enter Islam and your rewards will be doubled. And if you do not, then you must prepare for eventually Islam will spread and will take over the world. But upon entering this country close to Persia, these men who were messengers were killed, executed. And this even for the disbelievers was not allowed in warfare to kill the messenger. And upon hearing this news, the Prophet ﷺ was very upset and very angry. He was furious that this disrespect was shown by the Persians. 
And so he gathered the army and he said, Zaid, his beloved, not son, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him not to have a son. He raised him when he was young until he married Umm Ayman until he gave or she gave birth to who? The son of Zaid Usama another warrior of Islam so the Prophet وسلم, chose the most beloved person to him as a child he raised him Zaid, you were the first person to lead. They are to hold the flag. And then we hear the story as conveyed by the Prophet وسلم, him being in Medina. And this is a miracle of the Prophet وسلم, him being in Medina and the battle, the battle of Mutta was being taken place, is being taken place. And the Prophet وسلم, is saying to the rest of the companions, Zaid has now raised the flag. And moments after, he said the flag has been dropped. Meaning Zaid was killed. The Prophet وسلم, said, وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عندما أخبر الصحابة بتلك الغزوة أخذ الراية زيد فأصيب زيد took the flag and he was killed ثم أخذ الراية جعفر جعفر who's جعفر جعفر ابن أبي طالب the brother of علي the cousin of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم أخذ الراية جعفر فأصيب he was killed ثم أخذ الراية ابن رواحة عبد الله ابن رواحة فأصيب and he was killed three men the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وعيناه صلى الله عليه وسلم تذرفان he began to cry you can imagine taking news that Zaid had just passed جعفر جعفر what what was Ja'far called after this battle? Ja'far al-Tayyar. Ja'far al-Tayyar, the flyer. Why was he called Ja'far al-Tayyar? Ja'far the flyer in this battle. Holding the flag with his right hand, holding the flag of La ilaha illallah, the enemies of Islam amputated one arm. He grabbed it with the left, the amputated the, the other. And the Prophet وسلم, said that Yawmul Qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him wings instead of arms. So he was known from then on as Ja'far al-Tayyar, Ja'far the flyer. You can imagine the Prophet وسلم, seeing this, knowing about this, and then telling the companions, Zayd has passed. Ja'far has passed. Abdullah ibn Rawaha has passed. And he's crying. And then he mentions, Hatta akhadha al-raya sayfun. Hatta akhadha al-raya sayfun. Until a sword took their place. He grabbed the flag, a sword. Min Suyufillah, any sword? No, the sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hatta fatahallahu alayhim until they were victorious. Fasummi ya Khalid min dhalika liyom, Sayfullah. And then Khalid, from that day, he was called the sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Khalid, after the battle of Mutta, mentions in that battle. Nine swords were broken in his hand. Nine swords were broken. Nine. And the only sword he had left was a sword that he made in Yemen. Nine swords. 
were broken in that battle. This is now the sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any sword? The drawn sword of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this point in time, his conquest and his battles reads like a stellar list of all of the greatest battles of Islam. From the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet appointed him as the leader, to the, uh, the attack of Ta'if, to the incident of Hunayn, and then after the death of the Prophet Khalid was the main warrior, the main leader, whom Abu Bakr unleashed. He was called Abu Bakr's right-hand man. He, he, Abu Bakr unleashed him against the wars of Ridda, and he was the person who was in charge of the wars of Ridda and he unified the the the, the, uh, the early Republic if you like or the early state of Islam and then of course the greatest battle that Khalid is known for the greatest battle was the battle of Yarmouk was the battle of Yarmouk and through the battle of Yarmouk and all of those similar battles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the Byzantine Empire for the Ummah. The Byzantine Empire, i.e. the Roman Empire, the strongest empire at the time. Khalid ibn al-Walid was that military commander who was leading the very first and the greatest victory. And after the Battle of Yarmouk, it was just a domino falling one after the other. Damascus, Syria, Palestine, all of it, you know, after this, it opened up the way for the Muslims. Syria, Palestine, Jordan, when did all of these lands come under the territory of, of, of the Muslims? In the time of Khalid ibn al-Walid and Umar ibn al-Khattab as the Khalifa. It was Khalid ibn al-Walid whom Allah Azza wa Jal chose to have this great honor to. And Yarmouk, if you like, was the culmination. And if you study the story of Khalid, it is as if Allah was preparing him for Yarmouk slowly but surely for the last 25 years. Allah was preparing him for that great battle. And now he was in his bed in Homs, in a town in Syria. And he looks to himself and he talks to his companions and he says, there is not a place in my body that there is not a scar from the battlefield. There is not a month or a year that went past without a battle that I fought for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now I die in my bed, on my mattress, the same way a camel dies. Now I die in my bed, on my mattress, the same way a camel dies. Still, the warrior in him, the battle machine, he did not accept to die on the mattress, but this was not in his hands anymore. He was in the last moments of death. He was in Sakarat and Mot, the pangs of death. And all he could think about is that all of these years that I'm fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and now I die in my bed, I do not die as a martyr in the battlefield, having sorrow upon himself, but not accepting it, telling the disbelievers around the world from his time to the time of Qiyamah, to the last day, he said with all the warrior in him, the lion that was in him, he said, Fala, never, never, Fala, namat a'yunul jubana. Never will the eyes of the coward sleep. نضربوه ببعضنا كذلك يحيي الله الموتى ويريكم آياته لعلكم لعلكم تعقلون ثم قست قلوبكم من بعد ذلك فهي كالحجارة أو أشد قسوة وإن من الحجارة لما يتفجر منه الأنهار